Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. <laughs> Why are my eyes like that? Oh my God. Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. And today we're here with a neck reel slayer guide for old school runescape and my endless adventure to make as many slayer guides as possible. Hopefully you enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like and if you want to check me out and support me in other forms, links are down below in the description to check out. But beyond that, Let's go ahead and get into the guide. So to start like with all my Slayer guides, should you kill them? That's the first question we have to answer. In my opinion is undoubtedly, yes, you should be killing Necreals. No matter who you are, they are good to kill. They are meta XP in terms of combat or magic and just Slayer in general. And they are also profitable. So both of those things added up. There's no reason you should not be killing them. As far as the requirements, you need 80 Slayer to be able to kill them. You could come here with less, but you're not gonna get them assigned, so it doesn't really matter. There's no point in boosting. 43 Prayer is going to be really good for most of the methods. You can come here without it, but a majority of people are gonna need it. And I would recommend 70 plus in your melees or in your magic, depending on what you're using. I mean, realistically, at this point, a Slayer, you should be up there, so I think everyone's good in terms of that. We'll be killing Necreals with magic and melee. They're essentially weak to everything, but that's what we'll be focusing on. Their attack style is is melee based and they can hit up to an 11 or a 21 depending on which one you're killing if it is the regular neck reel or the greater neck reel. As far as what to expect from the normal neck reels they have a 1 in 77 drop rate of a Konar key if you're on a Konar task, a 1 in 128 drop rate of hard clues and their average kill loot is 4.3k. That's assuming you're picking up everything you probably won't be so it'd be a little closer to 4 or below. For greater neck reels they have a 1 in 68 chance at a Konar key again the same rate of a Hard clue at 10128, and their overall loot per kill is about 5k. A little bit higher, but they also are a little harder to kill, so a net net, not that different. Moving on to the melee gear that you can bring here. I have a few different setups that so we'll go ahead and pop up there. Um, on the left hand side, we can see that there is a whip setup with some initiate as well. All that stuff will be listed down below if you want to check it out, but essentially I was going for kind of a lower level setup. Here you could switch in a dragon sim if you wanted to make it really, really cheap. I just figured at this point most people are probably going to have a better weapon than that, but you never really know each person's scenario, so you could swap that in if you wanted to. On the medium setup, just a few upgrades here with the amulet and the ring and the weapon as well. I like the abyssal dagger, just a nice cheap alternative for strength based training and then finally on the right hand side this is by no means like a maxed out setup but just a high level example of what you could bring here um, over to neck reels and again just going with prayer for all of these setups you can go for defense if you want to and we'll talk about that in a second as far as the weapon alternatives um, an arc light is the best one it's actually best in slot but with how many places you can use the arc light at now i don't really know how often people are going to want to use it on a random task so if you want to bring it it's going to be the best alternative then there's also the rapier and the blade as well just some high level things just to keep those people happy you know say that i got them in here but essentially you can use whatever you want to as far as weapons go it's it's weak to everything the same as far as melee goes so no worries there and then for those that want to go for a defensive gear setup bandos or barrows uh, is what you're going to want to switch out for the prayer based pieces really just depends on your money and what you got is going to be deciding which ones you choose now neck reels can actually be bursted in the catacomb so there is mage gear for this guide um, on the left hand side that is more of a med level setup that i think people could be bringing here um, this is kind of surprisingly uh Focusing on prayer as well, the uh, top and bottom are both proselyte here. Um, it's actually better to just save prayer rather than focusing on your magic-based offense to an extent. On the right-hand side, you can see that that's not the case. Like, if you can fully get maxed out gear, it is worth it to do that. But if you can't get fully maxed out gear, it's actually not worth it to, like, upgrade to Arams and stuff like that. You'd rather just have the extra prayer bonus because magic's a strange skill where the gear and the bonuses sometimes don't work as well as you'd think they do which is why you can kind of have scenarios like this where we just disregard it most all the items are below if you want to check those out but you could be bursting or barraging here bursting requires 70 magic while barraging requires a 94 barraging is also a bit more expensive like a good bit more expensive essentially like three times as much but you get better damage tasks get done quicker so it's kind of nice and then finally the slayer rates that you can kind of get here at neck reels if you're meleeing uh, anywhere from 20k to 35k slayer xp uh, per hour is what you can expect and for magic you can get 40k to 80k 
uh, Slayer XP per hour here. It might even be able to get a little over that depending on how sweaty you are, but magic is just insane. That's why I highly, highly recommend it here. If you want to get your mage up, this is going to be the way to do it through Slayer. And with those raids out there, let's go ahead and move on over to the gear and inventory. So we'll start off with the catacomb section. Uh, I'll be demonstrating how to mage them, but you can be meleeing as well. I'll talk more about melee setups here in a bit. But for the mage setup, looking at the inventory, I have a Din's Bulwark for a special attack to aggro a bunch of monsters. Um, just a really, really nice thing. Costs like three mil. It actually tanked lately. All right, back to, back to round three. Um, bronze darts to just aggro all of the Necreals. A Xerix Talisman to get to the Catacombs. A Slayer Ring to get to my Slayer Master and Imbued Heart for boosting magic. This is a, a hefty price tag, so if you don't have it, that is fine. Rune pouch, carry the runes that I'll need. Make sure to be on the ancient spell book. And then down here, mostly just prayer pots and sharks. I also bring a couple cerebrews and some restores, so then I can drink with the cerebrews and heal up while also then using my prayer pots with the restores, essentially. Prayer pots and restores are the same thing, so they're interchangeable. And I like to have a little bit of extra food with the cerebrews because you do get dealt some damage here at neck reels, even though you are praying. So, with that said, make your way on over to the catacomb somehow. Personally, I am going to be using the Xerix Talisman. There are plenty of ways to get here. A teleport right here. There's also a Xerix Tally area down here. A memoir spot over here. You can run to the west from over here. There's plenty of ways to make your way here. I'm sure if you're 80 Slayer, you probably know, but, you know, I just like to throw it out there for everyone because this is a guide and I feel it's got to be complete. It's just the way it works. But once you get on in here, just go ahead and run on to the north and make your way a little bit to the east, and you should see two little Necreal rooms. Um, hopefully one is empty. It's going to be hard sometimes, especially if it's like peak times, which it is right now for me, but I got a little lucky. So, take a room Room, whichever room you can maybe hop around if you have to um, I'm going to move that cerebro and demonstrate right now my din so go ahead and pray melee once you're in here and from there special attack one of these greater neck reels hopefully in the middle and like you saw there just attacked all of them so I didn't even have to do any other work um, I'd recommend turning off auto retaliate just to make it easier and once you have them aggro on you just run back and forth in this little corner and that will stack them like such and once you have them kind of in a little three tile area switch it back on over to your code eye grab a spell, and off you go. Start attacking in the middle, and it's a pretty easy time. And then as far as drops go, you will get a decent bit here. You can either bring an Explorer's Ring if you have the uh, a diaries done to the point at which you feel satisfied. You can either go for the low alk or the high alk, preferably the high alk, of course. And if not, then just go ahead and bank and make your way back here every now and then. It's not too big of a deal. One thing I would recommend to do is make sure you pick up a lot of soul runes, because if you do end up getting a Necriarch, which is the superior form of the Necreal, it's pretty annoying to kill. So what I I like to do is I'll throw on my Kodai wand and then change to a blood based spell which you need soul runes to do and when you do that you can just kind of burst the pile um, or barrage the pile with the blood spell and you'll be fine if not whenever the greater neck reel attacks you he'll spawn some minions that start to do some pretty hefty damage um, and if you're not using a blood based spell you will have to just run on out of here to a different area and once they unaggro you just run back in little work around there if you have the soul runes but really it's up to you and what you have and if you have the imbued heart make sure to always kind of be up on that and using that as you go definitely helps out with the xp per hour but as far as magic goes it's really it you can use this corner you can use that corner i mean any corner where there's like a nice little tile that you can run back and forth on that's all you really need the process of this just kind of stacks them all in one spot so then you have the most effective form of attack and beyond that it's just really good magic xp you can also switch on over to the magic and defense based xp to uh, just mix the both of them there's nothing inefficient about it so just if you need defense xp definitely worth doing on to the melee side of things here i'm going to be going to the slayer tower just to kind of change it up and show a different area for my inventory i just have a special weapon an herb sack a slayer ring a teleport to my house to get away and some high alks as well along with two super combat potions and a bunch of food nothing too complicated here to get to the slayer tower Personally, I'm just going to be using my Slayer Ring, but there are other ways that you can get there, like this map will show us down here. There is a Fairy Ring at CKS. You can teleport to the South Graveyard with a Teletab or off the Arceus Spellbook. There is a Kirill Teleport over here, a Frankenstrain Teleport over there, and even an Ectophile all the way over here. So, one way or another, you should be able to find your way over here. Had a little voice crack there, but... This man's, what, what kind of, okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> go up on the spiky chain if you have the ability to. 61 Slayer or 56 with the Summer Pile do the trick. Make sure you have a nose peg on. Personally, I have the Slayer Helm, so it already works for me. Um, if not, just 
run your way around you know how to get up the slayer tower and once you come on over here just make your way on up through the staircase once you're on the top floor run out to the east you'll see a bunch of gargoyles and there is one necril just kind of peeking through his little room there how you doing buddy and over here this is another spot at which you can kill them they can also be found in the basement here i just decided to go up here so everyone would be able to see but the basement is slayer task only also if you have some of the morantania diaries done you actually get a little bit of bonus slayer xp anywhere from 2.5 to 10 percent depending on your completion level of those diaries so a potential little bonus there but here it's only single so you're not going to be taking that much damage so for people that are meleeing and don't want to pray i would definitely recommend the slayer tower because the catacombs is just going to be a bad time and it's a pretty easy task pretty profitable nice xp overall a great time so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like anything you want to tell me let me know in a comment down below and on top of that if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live make sure to subscribe and with that said hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace